The Indigo Disc DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is just 7 days away, and a brand new trailer was just released. This trailer showcased a variety of new features including ball throwing stances, controlling your Pokemon, and most importantly, the ability to catch past legendary Pokemon in the Paldea region. This trailer showcased a number of previously unconfirmed legends that will be returning in the DLC, including the Beast of Johto and the Legends of the Alola region games. But what about the likes of Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini, Tapu Bulu, and Tapu Lele? Can we expect Xerneas and Eveltal to return? Let's discuss what their exclusion or inclusion could mean for the competitive landscape of the game. If you enjoy it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon videos just like this. But first, this channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTED at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. So yeah, that uh, new trailer just dropped. Uh, in my opinion, like I know I saw some leaks as far as like what Pokemon were returning, uh, but beyond that, um, you know, I, I didn't really get much spoiled for me in the trailer. Uh, however, I will say it was definitely just one of those, hey, just a quick reminder, the game's coming out next week sort of trailers, which it's whatever. I was a little disappointed I got up for it, but <laughs> um, if you guys want to see my live reaction, I'll put that in a pinned comment down below. Anyways, we did see what Pokemon would be returning in the trailer as static encounters, uh, but I am I want to discuss more the impact of the Pokemon that won't be returning. And that sounds like a really weird concept for a video like, hey, you know, like, why talk about what's in the game when we can talk about what isn't? No, um, basically, I'm going to talk about these Pokemon that are returning, what we know, like how good they are in VGC when we play, have those restricted formats. But I also want to talk about uh, me mostly just coping that these Pokemon might still be in the DLC because it's really weird that this list of Pokemon is currently not confirmed for the DLC. And the Regis are like soft confirmed. I'll get into that in a second. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, uh, and comment down below what you think. Let's get into it. We'll start off with the confirmed Pokemon. Uh, I'll recap for you. Uh, in that trailer, we did actually see... Uh, here, let me play a bit of it for you with the volume off. Uh, we did see like a quick cut compilation of a bunch of like static encounters. Uh, the first batch of Pokemon that we saw were already in the game uh, via DLC and stuff or not via DLC, via Pokemon Home. However, uh, the next batch of Pokemon does contain basically everything except for Kyogre and Groudon are not currently in the game's code, I believe, um, but they're going to be in the DLC and available through Home and via Static Encounter. So yeah, uh, we see like the likes of Suicune, Entei, Raikou, uh, Terrakion, Cobalion, Virizion. These six, in my opinion, even though they weren't confirmed, they were confirmed before the DLC trailer dropped because we have the Paradox forms for them. And I feel like that's just a given, you know, if you have a Paradox Pokemon, the other form is going to be in the game. So far, that rule has not been broken. Uh, beyond that, we did see Latios and Latias. Those are pretty phenomenal Pokemon. Uh, historically in VGC, we had a Latias um, almost win the World Championships in 2018. Or maybe it, it did win. No, no, no. Because Paul Ruiz played against the Latias. He didn't have it. Uh, but yeah, Latias is a pretty decent Pokemon. It has really good special bulk, high speed, hits like a truck with Draco Meteor. Uh, the Latios variant of it is less bulky. Uh, Latias picked up because in that format there were a lot more fairy types, so it was a lot easier to tank the hit from those things. Uh, you know, Latios does hit a lot harder though. We have seen like Specs Draco Meteor and Life Orb Draco Meteor. Uh, and Dragon Gym Draco Meteor be insanely hard to switch in on. Uh, but as far as the sub legendaries go, like the non box legendaries, that's it. Those are all the new ones. And um, as far as the restricted legends go, we did get a couple more confirmed that were pretty big. So uh, I want to start off with Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh is an interesting case because it is a Pokemon uh, that has historically been kind of mid as far as restricted legends go. Uh, we have seen it work well next to the likes of uh, Xerneas. We've seen it work well like with the likes of Zacian. Uh, even next to Kyogre, Ho-Oh Kyogre was a thing. But that was only because it was a really good way of dealing with Ferrothorn. And yeah, um, it, you could technically, you know, fit it in next to Groudon. But I, I, you end up like losing to Kyogre a lot more easily that way. You typically want something defensive for that. But, it, it, you know, it has a positive matchup in a Groudon. Sacred Fire is one of the best moves in the game. You could even make a case for like Chen Pao Ho being a thing. You know, it's extremely bulky. It's hard to um, 
it's hard to one shot with anything short of rock move and you know speaking of rock moves this thing is going to be definitely one of the pokemon that really really benefits from terra whether it be an offensive and sort of defensive terra fire or maybe going for a terra grass or terra water uh, to remove that weakness altogether uh, you could even make the case for something that would just straight up resist rock you can do terra steel um and that would be pretty decent but yeah no ho -Oh, definitely like a really solid pokemon it's got access to like tailwind and stuff uh also roost and recover it's <sighs> It's it's going to be mid, but I'm hoping we can make it work. I really like Ho-Oh as a design. Next up is Lugia. Lugia is historically pretty bad in VGC. Um, it only does one thing. It's multi-scale weakness policy. Typically in Dynamax, you would see Lugia players do side shadow sneak plus, you know, arrow blast into max airstream and try to sweep teams at plus two. But the thing with Lugia is that it's only 90 special attack. So even at plus two, it doesn't hit particularly hard. Like... If you were to go modest Lugia plus two, 156, that's what? Three, oh, it's that's 312. I'm pretty sure Lunala comes pretty close to hitting a stat like that. Oh no, sorry, at plus one. 189 at plus one. Nah, it's a little bit short of that. But yeah, Lugia, the fact that it has to like run that item instead of any other like good utility item and that it needs the weakness policy to get going and is like a snarl weak Pokemon. It's 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 a rough <laughs> it's a rough Pokemon to use. I don't think it's gonna be good. However, Lugia players will be Lugia players and keep trying to run it. So Galio, uh, we were pretty sure was gonna be in the game. It's a pretty good Pokemon. Uh, it's you know Full Metal Body is a phenomenal ability. It's just Clear Body. It's literally just Clear Body. But I think the only difference is Mold Breaker doesn't bypass it, and that's like the only real difference. Um, same with like Lunala's version of Multi Scale Shadow Shield is not bypassed by. Mold Breaker stuff, uh, but so Galio is historically a pretty okay Pokemon. It is again a weakness policy user at times. However, it has been known to run the Life Orb item since Sun Seal Strike is such a powerful attack uh, that will allow it to basically one shot the likes of Xerneas and stuff. But Xerneas, so far not confirmed. We'll get into that. That's like the big part of the video. I'm just going through Pokemon that we do know are coming back. 97 speed. It's done a couple of things in the past. It's been like, sorry. It's been like a Trick Room Setter, uh, it's worked under Tailwind, uh, it's it's just sort of like a Jack of All Trades, normal, or it, not normal, Steel Psychic type. Lunala is usually pretty better, it's really really strong, uh, it would typically run a Z move in the past, uh, but as of Generation 8 when it lost access to Z moves, uh, it would have to run other things. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on what Lunala's best item was. Oh, why am I blanking on that? That's weird. I played so much of that format. Anyways, Lunala is basically just like a Trick Room Setter. Uh, you would basically, and it isn't even like a slow Trick Room Setter. Obviously, it has base 97 speed. So sometimes you would actually run a bit of speed, like to outspeed other Lunalas, because uh, Lunala's uh, Moongeist Beam would allow you to one-shot opposing Lunala at times. Uh, oh, would it run specs sometimes? I don't know. I'm, I'm blanking on that. But yeah. Uh, it would allow you to one-shot opposing Lunalis through Shadow Shield at, in some matchups, uh, and also being able to have that like middling speed tier where even though you're faster than opposing Lunalis, you can set Trick Room after the fact and then like, you know, play like a soft Trick Room option. Like that's really good. Necrozma, not good. However, it's fused forms. This one, not good. This one, pretty okay. Uh, these guys would also usually do like weakness policy or life orb or whatever. Uh, but they're basically just powered up versions of Lunala and Solgaleo that are slower, bulkier, and take less damage because they lose their original abilities. Uh, not much to go into with them. Zekrom, Reshiram, Kyurem, Kyurem White, Kyurem Black. They really only have notable stuff going on in Dynamax format, so I don't really know what to make of them. I think Kyurem White's always going to be a threat. You know, Scarf, Blizzard should probably be a thing. Also with Snow, Kyurem White could actually be pretty decent. Um... And yeah, being able to turn off your ice type at any point, it's kind of crazy. Actually, no, I'm kind of scared of Kieran White. Hold on, I don't want to talk about that one anymore. Let's talk about the Pokemon that aren't confirmed. Uh, so Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, Tapu Fini, Tapu Bulu. These are the only four I truly care about. I like Eveltal, but these are the only four that I truly care about. So as far as legends that are not in the game go, this is a pretty short list. Um... I don't know why they wouldn't include the Tapus for any reason other than they think maybe they'd be a little bit too strong. 
but I have a feeling that they are going to be included. Maybe not as static encounters, but they might be. They might just be static encounters. You know, we might have like a Dynamax Adventures thing going on. Um, but they also might just be like home transfer only, which historically has not been a problem for VGC. Um, and by not been a problem, I don't mean for the players, but for the Pokemon company to do that. You know, we've had Urshifu and Tornadus and Landers be legal for the past couple of months, even though they're not catchable in game. That might be the case for Tapu Koko, Lele, Finny, and Bulu. Uh, but yeah, these Pokemon would have such a significant impact in the game. Specifically, Tapu Fini would be such a quality of life improvement for so many teams. Being able to use Tapu Fini to stop like Spore, Sleep Powder, Thunder Wave, uh, all of that, and also have another fairy type that's actually viable in the game would be huge. Because at the moment, we barely have fairy types. It's pretty much like Heatran and Fluttermane. It's funny that Heatran's like one of the best fairy types right now. Uh, but that's just the fact of the, of the situation. Um, I really want Tapu Fini to be in the game. Uh, it could, here, at level 50, Fini's actually a pretty interesting Pokemon. It hits like a speed tier where you only have to invest two to outspeed literally everything under Tailwind. Um, but even better, it has access to Icy Wind, so you can just Icy Wind things a couple of times and be fine. It typically has access to Muddy Water, which is an awesome move for it. And then you have like Calm Mind uh, and Moonblast. And if you want to run like Calm Mind sets, you typically drop Icy Wind for Protect. It's like, that's like a thing. Uh, and you run like leftovers. So Finny is cool because it is a bulky Pokemon that brings a lot of balance to the game. It makes it a lot harder for things to get away with sweeps, which I very much appreciate. Uh, so an example of a Pokemon that Tapu Finny would pair pretty well into right now um, is Landorus. So Landorus is a very offensive Pokemon right now. It is pivoty, it is bulky, but it's mostly bulky only because of like Intimidate. It's usually running Choice Scarf at the moment. That's like basically, <laughs> that's like basically the big draw of Landers is the ability to get in, get out, take a KO occasionally. So, you know, that's a little bit annoying. Um, as far as like Fluttermane goes, this gives us like a really, really good special uh, Pokemon that can eat hits from Fluttermane pretty effectively. Let me go ahead and open up the Pokemon Showdown Damage Calculator. Um, here, Showdown Damage Calc. Sorry, there it is. So if you were to pull up Tapu Fini, Blink Set, and Fluttermane, let's go with like Choice Specs, set them to level 50, give Finny max HP. Sorry about the, you know, <laughs> sorry about the uh, light mode jump scare. I know you guys prefer dark mode, but yeah. Uh, Specs Moonblast to max HP Tapu Fini, coming off of, let's go with like worst case scenario, modest, to 73%. Finny tends to run like a special defense or defense boosting nature anyway, so you can go ahead and invest into that. And then at that point, you can actually have a Pokemon that eats the Moonblast pretty respectively well for how strong of a move it is. Um, and then respond with like an Icy Wind and allow for a partner Pokemon to KO. That's pretty big. Uh, another, you know, reason I would really much enjoy the Tapus to come back is Dynamic Terrain. It seems like there's only two terrains in the game right now because Misty Terrain has never been set by anyone ever. Um, except like a couple of Grimmsnarl sets, funny enough. But yeah, uh, the best Misty Terrain setter is Grimmsnarl. Uh, you typically only see Grassy and Psychic Terrain. Electric Terrain is MIA. Uh, Pink Urchin has been found dead on the streets of Nevada. Uh, so that's, that's unfortunate. And yeah, it's either Grassy or Psychic, and it's Rillaboom, you know, getting in late game, going for, um, you know, going for Grassy Glides, Terra, Terra Grass, Miracle Seed stuff or just like supports the team throughout the game, giving everything recovery. Uh, and then on the other side of things, it's like Indeedy Armourouge, soon to be Indeedy Hatterene in my opinion, once uh, it gets Expanding Force, and they just spam like Expanding Force, Helping Hand, Trick Room, follow me. Those are like the only two terrains we see. Tapu Koko coming back into the game would be huge because it would allow for the past Paradox Pokemon, or the future Paradox Pokemon with um, Fork Drive to actually use their ability for once. It's a scary Pokemon, so I want you to envision this. I, I, I like that it's scary because if Tapu Koko comes back along with the other Tapus, it'll be fine because terrain will be constantly changing and it's hard for them to keep Cork Drive up. So yeah, if we were to take a look at Tapu Koko on a team, it sets electric terrain, right? You can run that next to Iron Bundle. And now Iron Bundle doesn't have to run booster energy. It might still run booster energy, but you can speed boost now, right? You can do Timid Specs Iron Bundle. 
And you can actually just go ahead and go for like maybe like an assault vest Tapu Coco. Like that's actually a pretty decent set with like wild charge, U turn. Sky drops no longer in the game, but yeah, you can like lead off this way. And Coco doesn't like Landorus. Iron Bundle loves Landorus. It can click Icy Wind into it, and then Coco U turns out, and then you bring in your own Landorus. Like that's that's hot. That, that, like I really want to do that. Uh, beyond that, there are other you know future Paradox Pokemon that would really love to activate their ability. Uh, and maybe give them some viability in this format. Uh, so, I don't know. Obviously, Iron Hands with this would be ridiculous. But Iron Treads, Iron Valiant, Iron Thorns, they don't really get to do anything. Iron Jugulus hardly gets to use uh, anything, really. Like, it's not really on any teams. I don't know. Um, I think that it'd be really good for the game if Coco came back. And I think that it is going to come back for one reason. We'll get into this right now. I feel like I keep putting it off. <sighs> so, if, if the Tapus aren't in the game... In my opinion, that would mean they are the only group of legendaries that are, or the only group of sub-legendaries that would be excluded, and it would have to be on purpose, right? It, it couldn't just be like, oh, we didn't feel like adding them. It would be, we purposely did not add these guys, because with Reggie Drago and Reggie Alecki in the game, it's very rare, I don't think it's ever happened, actually, that one or two of a legendary group were added to the game and then the rest were excluded that'd be like if mesperit made it into the game but yuxi and azelf did not so reggie gigas reggie steel reggie ice and reggie rock are like soft confirmed in my opinion i think that they're coming back because the other reggies are already in the game so that leaves us with Eveltal, xerneas and zygarde these pokemon not deconfirmed but some sources say that they're not coming back. I would understand these not coming back for game balance. Zygarde, because it'd be weird to bring back Xerneas um, and Eveltal without bringing back... Uh, or because it'd be weird to bring it back without bringing back Xerneas and Eveltal. Uh, Eveltal for the same reason. And Xerneas, because this Pokemon would be ridiculous. This Pokemon would be absurdly broken in terrestrialization format. Let me give you an example of the sort of things you can do with this thing. Groudon, Xerneas, already historically one of the best duos in VGC ever. Groudon beats the steel and fire and poison types that you know Xerneas has to that doesn't uh, doesn't want to deal with. Uh, Xerneas hits everything with um, Power Herb plus two Geomancy boosted moves. Right now, Xerneas has the opportunity to Terra Fairy, further boosting the power of moves like it has adaptability on them. Basically, let's let's run a calc. You know, I'm curious. I'm curious. Xerneas. Level 50. Let's put it up against a Zacian. Right? Let's put it up against Zacian. Sorry, Zacian crowned. And it has Moonblast. And it's at plus two, timid. And also it has its fairy aura active, yes. And also we're going to terrestrialize it. I think this isn't at level 50. Hold on. There we go. All right. Plus two, Terra Fairy. It does 77 to 91%. If you run Modest, which you can, it's a roll to Chaosation, the Pokemon that's meant to beat Xerneas. Um, and beyond that, there are other things you can do. Chi Yu fits perfectly well onto this team because it gets boosted by Sun. And it, it, it boosts Xerneas' attacks, right? So if we activate the Beads of Ruin, because it's very easy to have Sun and Chiyu active at the same time while Xerneas is on the field, that's a thing. You know, Moonblast does a ridiculous amount. It's a guaranteed one-shot versus Zacian. How much does it do to a Groudon? Or here, here, let's do, let's do Kyogre. Because Kyogre, like bulky Kyogre, is actually like a pretty decent switch into Xerneas since, you know, it's just that bulky. Here, let's do like 244 and then like I don't know 12 whatever 252 12 we'll do 252 12 right if we turn on beads of ruin it's tarot moonblast I don't think that's correct there we go guaranteed one shot versus Kyogre absolutely ridiculous and there's one more thing that scares me so the last Pokemon that I think would fit well on this is Fluttermane. And here's why. 
It is hypothetically possible to give Fluttermane the most passive boosts you could possibly give a Pokemon. Choice specs, right? So like, let's say you lead off, um, let's say you lead off like Fluttermane and Groudon, right? Then the next turn, you go for Terra Fairy and the opponent has like a Chiyu on the field. Let's say that like Chiyu is like super common. The opponent has Chiyu on the field. That means that Beads of Ruin are active. We'll do a calc with and without Beads of Ruin, right? So we have Fluttermane. Choice Specs. Let's do 252 for like maximum damage. Modest. Sun is active. So that means Protosynthesis. Special Attack. Terra Fairy. Uh, and also... Xerneas on the field. Fairy Aura is now active. All fairy moves have a 30% boost, so we'll turn on Fairy Aura. Where is Fairy Aura? Hold on. I can find it. I can find it. I can find it. I'm going to pause it till I find it. I couldn't find it. You guys can yell at me later, but I checked, and um, Power Spot is basically the same boost, but it's 1.3 instead of 1.33, so we'll just pretend it's Power Spot. So now we have... <laughs> Terra Fairy, Choice Specs, Special Attacking, um, you know, Special Attacking, uh, Protosynthesis, and Fairy Aura active. Into a Kyogre. This does... Am I, do my eyes deceive me? Yes, they do, because that's at 100. 111% minimum. Oh, I didn't turn on Sun. There we go. Huh, that doesn't hit nearly as hard as I thought it would. Now I'm, like, kind of upset. I thought I was making a really good point here. Still, very strong. A guaranteed one-shot on Kyogre is nothing to scoff at, you know? 252 choice specs, Protosynthesis, Terra Fairy, Fluttermane, Power Spot, Boosted, Moonblast. Uh, yep, seems about right. That is a lot. That is a lot of damage. How much does it do to Zacian? Round. 82 to 97. That's pretty strong. That's pretty strong. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was going to calc it with Beads of Ruin. Now it dies. Interesting, right? So, yeah. Uh, I think that they might not want to include Xerneas. Specifically because, like, Fairy Aura would add so many multipliers to the game that it could just, like, break Fluttermane. Um, and also, just with Terra, Xerneas becomes ridiculous itself. Like, it is a stupid Pokemon. Uh... So I think that they might exclude that on purpose. I personally wouldn't mind if it was included, but it might ruin the game. Who knows? So yeah, uh, if we get rid of that, then... <laughs> yeah, I, I think that the only Pokemon that have a chance of not being included are the Tapus and the Gen 6 Legends. It, it, like, it just, it wouldn't make sense, though, if they included everything but the Tapus. But it would also be really weird if they did include the Gen 6 Legends for, like, balance reasons. I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Um, I just want to talk about like what Pokemon were confirmed, what Pokemon were not, uh, why I think the Tapu should return. Also, please give, please, please, please. Like I, I, I need this guy to do something. <laughs> I just, I need to be able to run Grassy Glide on my guy. Let me do this. They give him close combat. Can I please, can I please run my my Tapu Bulu? I just, I just want to run my boy. Anyways, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Just wanted to give you an update on what Pokemon are not returning and what Pokemon are. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.